Hi, Ben here, and welcome back to another Work in Progress Wednesday. So today, even though it's a beautiful spring sunny day and the daffodils are out and the hills are actually calling, we have actually got to do a bit of work in the workshop today, but it's all good fun. So today what I've done is, so far I have prepped some Woodlander blades. So these are in ABL. So what I tend to do is I prep the blades, get the rough grinds put on, but before I take them any further than that, because these are going to have an acid stone wash finish on there, I need to now put my logo in there. So a few people commented that they wanted to see a little bit more information about how I use my fibre laser to put the logo on there. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you those few little settings really. So I'll take these blades upstairs and we'll show you what we're going to do next. So we brought the blades upstairs and the first thing that I like to do is, obviously this is the laser itself. This is a 50 watt laser, fibre laser. It's brilliant it hasn't got some of the features that some of the high-tech lasers have got so it hasn't got a automatic focal length i've got to set that but we'll do that in a minute and it comes with a package that's called easycad that's the software that you can import your dxf files and your logos it has got simple things in there so if you want to do text and things like that it's just like a sort of normal sort of uh, sort of like word processing unit almost it's got all the different fonts in there few people asked the settings, it's really up to the material that you're using and also the kind of effect that you want to leave on there. So I like to leave a really deep etch into the steel. So this is my logo that I've brought in. So I brought that in as a DXF file. And then you basically, once you've got it in there, you can then change the size of it. So basically once you've brought it in, you can highlight that. And if you come over to this other side, the left-hand side of the screen, this is where you can change the size of it. So you can pretty much make that as big or as small as you want. So normally my logo is about sort of 10 to 11 mil in height. It's basically square. So that's set to there. And then at this side, um, on the right hand side, you've got all these funny colours, which can be a bit confusing to start with. So basically what you need to do is you want to make sure that you untick this use default parameters. That's basically like the sort of set parameters with all these different settings down here. And if you use this sort of default program, it basically won't give you any options. So what I've got is I've got two different parameters set. So I've got this first one, which is the black, the black pen. So basically to highlight the pen, they call them pens. Basically that's the settings for each particular uh, sort of application that you can use. I've got a black pen set up and these are my settings. So uh, it says current pen is zero. The amount of loops, so that's how many times it actually does the same sort of process. So I've got actually that set to seven. The speed, this is millimeters a second. So this is at 500. And then you've got the power, which is 70. And then you've got the frequency that is 20. You don't really need to worry about the rest of it really. But basically, rule of thumb, the more loops you have, obviously the, the deeper it will cut. And then you might need to tweak around with how, how fast you set it. But more than anything, it's the power that you need to sort of think about. So the more power you have and the more loops you have, basically the more that it will cut into the steel. So I like to go really deep in there. So that's why I've got lots of loops and I've obviously got the power setting quite high. I've then got a second pen so I've actually got a blue pen, which is pretty much for cleaning up the uh, sort of the passes. So obviously, because we've burnt in there a lot, you can imagine that it's got quite a sort of deep, dark, sort of dirty sort of etch to it at that stage. So what I tend to do is on the blue pen, which is over here, look on the right hand side again, I've got that set up. So it's got current pen one, which is the blue one. And then I've got six loops, so less loops. Still got the same amount of speed, but I've turned the power right down. So basically what that's gonna do is gonna clean up the bottom of the etch and just make it a bit better. So on this side, on the left-hand side, the reason why you can only see black at the moment, you create this thing at the top. Once you've got your logo in there, to make it sort of bold, basically, you've got this button at the top, which it looks like a little H, which is for hatch. That's basically gonna put like, effectively like zigzags across your logo so obviously that will create rather than just being like a wireframe image it's actually going to leave a much darker bolder line in there so the hatch pattern is the thing that will really give you that nice deep impression 
And what I've got over here is I've got three hatch settings. So I've got the first hatch is the zero pen, so the black pen again, so that's seven loops. Then I've got a second hatch, which is running in a different direction. And then that has got seven loops, same power. And then finally, the third hatch is in the blue pen. You can't see the blue pen because it sort of, uh, it just gets blocked out by the pen that you've last selected, I think. But yeah, basically I've got three hatches in there and that should do a really nice deep etch that will yeah never ever come off in the field really. But first thing before we actually set this program running is we need to actually set the focal length on the machine. So we'll show you that. Right, so first thing, I've mounted this very sort of simple uh, compound table that just enables me to position blades a little bit easier. But normally the laser doesn't come with this, but this was a sort of cheap addition really. First thing you probably wanna do, which the mistake a few people make, is before you fire up the laser, make sure you take the lens cap off because you'll think, oh, it's not working, why is that? Uh, and also you'll melt through it as well. Now, like I say, this machine hasn't got an automatic focal uh, setup. So basically what you get with it is you get a very simple steel rule and each lens has got a different focal length. It's just like when you're a kid with a magnifying glass and you're out in the sun and you're trying to get that sort of bead of sunlight to focus onto your tinder to get the fire going. Well, this is basically exactly the same. So we've got to get that angle, that distance, so that you get the perfect focal point on that piece of steel. So with the steel rule, you put that on top of whatever you're working on. So obviously this is only a three and a half mil thick blade. And the focal length for this particular lens is 26 centimeters. So you can see we've got a, a datum line on there. And of course, when I first set it up, I was like, well, where do I measure to? didn't even see this great big yellow sticker so there should be a sticker on there or a line don't measure to the actual lens itself because you don't want to scratch it basically and it's got a very simple setup where you've got a handle that winds this head up and down so the measure 26 oops make sure you get it pretty accurate you don't want to i mean a few mil will actually make quite a bit of difference so make sure you get it as accurate as possible so that's pretty much set up then what I'll do is I'll turn the laser on and I didn't turn it on at this stage because basically it would be a bit noisy. So the yellow light you always need on because otherwise your software will say it's, it doesn't recognize the dongle basically. You have to have the yellow light on for that software to actually sort of recognize that you've actually got a laser connected. So then we'll turn the green and the red on and the fan should kick in at that stage. So it's a little bit noisy. And then what we can do, the beauty of the fiber laser is that you can get like a preview of where that image is going to be on your steel. So we hit F1. So what that will do now is it will give us a preview onto our piece that we want to put the logo. And you can see that obviously where it's positioned at the moment, if I hit go, basically that would be putting the logo right there by the handle. So you basically can position that. Now it's showing at the moment my logo, but obviously it's sort of firing the sort of laser round and round and round. So you can sort of see the Celtic knot there, but it's sometimes a little bit difficult to position it exactly where you want, especially if you're trying to put, I often use it for putting uh, a steel type or initials or some kind of personalized engraving on that thin tang. So getting it on there is quite tricky if you use this kind of sort of preview. So what you can do, you can change the settings a little bit and you can go into the sort of the, the deeper settings, but the easiest way to do it is hit, hit escape, that turns off that preview. And then if you come down here, there's a little checkbox down here that says show contour. So if at the moment it's checked, so it's got a little tick in there. So uncheck that. And now when I hit F1, what it does now is it just projects a perfect little square and that basically dictates where your image your logo is going to be so at the moment wherever that square is I know that my logo is going to be within that little box so on the blades sort of faces it's not so much of an issue but like I say when you're doing any kind of thin small writing you want to get it absolutely square and precise having that little box is really really handy so what I want to do is I know that pretty much my logo goes just above this plunge line and I want to go to about 
about there. And I'm also lining up that, that edge, that straight edge of that square, so that it's parallel with the, the top of my bevel. And that looks pretty good. So we can hit escape and that turns off that preview. Now, before we start, this particular laser doesn't have any kind of cover or shielding. So it's absolutely essential that you get yourself some goggles. Not that I actually look at the laser that much, only when you just first fire it. I don't tend to watch it the whole time, but while you are checking that it's gonna work, make sure you've got your goggles on. You'll be fine at home because it, you won't get the, the intense laser through the screen. The other thing to think about, not only are you thinking about goggles, it will create dust and sort of fumes as you're burning into the steel. So I've got this extraction pipe set up and I've got one of my simple little clickers that turns on an extractor, which will take any dust or fume outside into the outside the workshop. So I'll get that running first. That was just a simple little remote. And then basically I've got this set up with a pedal. You can hit a button on the screen, but I've got this simple pedal. So once I'm happy, normally just turn the preview on just to make sure that I'm happy to go and then we hit that pedal and it will start etching into the steel. So this particular pen, the first pen that we've got set up, is purely for depth and penetration really. So at the moment it's doing quite aggressive cuts. You can see the sparks coming up a bit. It's burning into the steel. And then finally that last pen will be for just the cleanup pattern. And that will look totally different, so I'll show you that in a minute. So this is the last pen so they basically this is the cleanup pass you can see that it's much sort of less aggressive it's still going all around the whole contour but no amount of sparks now it's just sort of cleaning up the base of that etch really now this really helps on a polished blade so it gives a really nice dark finish in the bottom of the the, uh, the actual logo or the marking that you're putting on the blade it's not so critical on the stone wash blades because basically the uh, the ferric chloride is going to darken the base of the, the etch, but uh, I tend to do it on all, so it doesn't matter what blade finish I put on there. Then. But yeah, this is this is just doing that final cleanup. So it's just finished its cycle. Normally, I'd just leave the laser running because it's so loud. I'll actually turn that off. And what I will do is, it took me a while to work out because quite often I'll let this sort of run, and then I'll go downstairs and do other jobs. So. I was thinking, how long do I need to leave it running? Now, with this particular setup, it took me a while to work out, <laughs> simple as it sounds, it actually displays how long the etch takes here on the screen. So that etch actually took five minutes and 17 seconds. So for one, you know how long it's gonna take. So if you're costing a job, you basically know how, how much you've got to charge. But for me, I can set a timer on my watch for five minutes, go downstairs, keep grinding some blades, and then come up and it's done, basically. So it will probably feel a little bit warm to the touch. It's not red hot. If it was getting red hot, I would probably change my settings because obviously you don't want to damage the temper of your blade steel. Having it on an aluminium block or a table like this will help absorb some extra heat anyway. So if we have a little look at that now, you can see it's got a really nice sort of clean, almost gold finish in the bottom of the etch. But at this moment, I can feel there's quite a heavy burr on there. And if we left that, it would not be good news, really. It wouldn't leave a good finish on there. So I'll take that downstairs and I'll show you how I remove that burr. Now, obviously, that is my particular settings to give you that deep finish. You can play around with the settings. I mean, this is just scratching the surface of what this laser can do. You can basically change this setting so that you actually put that laser slightly out of the focal uh, uh, we obviously we were concentrating on getting that focus distance absolutely perfect if you take it out of focus slightly you can just leave like a little black almost oxide surface mark which is great if you want to put an initial on a blade that's totally finished ready to go but i want to put that deep etch in there so that's my just my personal setting so at least that'll give you a little starting point so you can play around with it but yeah take these downstairs and i'll show you how i go about cleaning those up 
So I've played around with how to remove that burr most effectively. And what I've actually found is the perfect combination is actually to deburr it first with a wire brush on a grinder before I blast it. So I'm just gonna turn this on and we'll just carefully hit that, that logo. So you can see that that's really effective at removing that heavy burr. I can't feel any burr now. So we're now just gonna put it in the blast cabinet just to give it that nice clean finish so that the ferric chloride will actually darken that blade down. So while that blade's soaking in the ferric chloride to give that dark finish, I'll just show you this is a couple that I've finished off. So this has got the nice acid stone wash finish on this one. More subdued, the logo on this one, obviously because of that dark finish. But this chap actually wanted some custom engraving on the actual tang itself as well. So having that little box feature that we were telling you about really helps when you're trying to line up things like that on that very narrow tang. And then on this one, this is a polished bit of RWL 34. So same settings, but it leaves that dark finish in the bottom of the blade. So real nice contrast when you've got those polished flats and that nice dark logo. So I've got to put the steel type on the tang here, but then this one should be ready to go. So that's what we've been working on so far this Wednesday. Obviously a mixture of a bit of high tech stuff and obviously the handcraft that goes into all these knives. So I'll probably get the edges on these knives and they'll get shipped out hopefully this week as well. So that's what we've been working on. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope it's helped a few of you that have got lasers yourselves and wanted to know the settings. But if you've got any questions, feel free to drop us a line. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week.